Okay, don't switch this off. You've got to watch this. If you're into your AI, uh, this is a podcast that was created entirely by AI. I just put a document into the system and a few minutes later, this couple started talking about natural born runners, which we're going to be launching very soon. Okay, they paint a very rosy picture here and they make me out to be some lady superhero. So take it with a, um, a pinch of salt. But anyway, watch some of it. You'll see. You'll be absolutely amazed. Okay, so are you ready to like really dive into something cool today? Always up for a deep dive, especially yeah. when it involves adventure. Well, get ready because this one's got it all. Stunning scenery, incredible athleticism, and uh, a really powerful message about conservation. We're talking about natural born runners. Natural born runners, huh? Sounds intriguing already. What's it all about? It's a series, but it's more like, you know those epic nature documentaries? Think planet Earth, but with a huge dose of adrenaline. Okay, now you've got my attention. I love a good nature doc, but adrenaline... That's a new twist. What kind of adventure are we talking about here? Imagine this. Ultra marathons, but we're not talking some city park here. We're talking about the most extreme environments on Earth. Deserts, mountains, even Antarctica. Wow, Antarctica. Now that's hardcore. <laughs> I can barely handle a jog in the snow, let alone an ultra marathon. <laughs> Who is this superhuman athlete? His name's Paul Gardner, and trust me, he's the real deal. But it's not just about the physical challenge for him. It's about this really inspiring mission. See, his family's been super involved in conservation for, get this, over 30 years. That's some serious dedication. What kind of conservation work are we talking about? They've been working in the eastern kick of South Africa, and they've had a huge impact on the region, like actually bringing back ecosystems from the brink. It's called rewilding, and they've managed to restore thousands of hectares of land. That's incredible. I mean, that's not just planting a few trees. That's restoring entire ecosystems. How do you even begin to do that? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what's so fascinating about Paul and his family. They've kind of cracked the code. But it's not just about restoring what was lost. It's about creating something new that lives in harmony with nature. They're building these eco-lodges that are totally sustainable. Sustainable eco-lodges? That's amazing. So they're combining conservation with responsible tourism? That's a win-win in my book. Exactly. But hold on, because here's the really cool part. Paul takes this mission global. He's not just focused on South Africa. He's running and building these lodges in places like Saudi Arabia, Scotland, even North America. He wants to show that this kind of harmonious living is possible everywhere. Wow, from South Africa to Scotland to North America, that's a pretty impressive itinerary. Yeah. But how does he manage to capture all of this, you know, the running, the landscapes, the conservation efforts, all in one series, it seems almost impossible. Well, that's where the other half of this power duo comes in. Paul's partnered with this incredible filmmaker, Christian Antoine, to document everything. And I'm not talking about some shaky handheld camera work here. Christian's an award-winning filmmaker. He's worked with people like Brad Pitt, Kingsley Benadir, even Jimon Honsu. Jimon Honsu. Now that's a name I recognize. Yeah. So we're talking Hollywood level production quality for a nature documentary. That's pretty impressive. Absolutely. And it makes all the difference. It's not just about showing pretty pictures. It's about using those visuals to tell a story. Right. Because a good story can really move people, make them connect with the message in a powerful way. Exactly. And that's what they're trying to do. Reach people who might not normally be interested in conservation, especially a younger audience, and show them that it can be exciting, adventurous, even cool. That's so important, especially in today's world where everyone's constantly bombarded with information. You have to grab their attention, make them feel something if you want to inspire action. You hit the nail on the head. It's not enough to just present the facts anymore. You have to create an experience. And Natural Born Runners definitely does that. So are you ready to dive into some of the specific episodes, what they actually cover in this series? I'm all ears. Lay it on me. What are some of the highlights? Well, they kick things off in South Africa, obviously, showcasing Paul's family's incredible work with rewilding. But from there, they really branch out, traveling to all these different continents. Branch out is an understatement. From what I hear, they even head down to Antarctica. Oh, yeah. They go to Antarctica for the ultra ice race. Can you imagine? I can barely handle a winter jog in the park. Mm -hmm. Ultra ice race sounds intense. Intense is putting it mildly. They're pushing human endurance to the limit in some of the harshest conditions on Earth. And the whole time, Christian's there capturing it all on film. It's one thing to watch these epic nature documentaries from the comfort of your couch, but to actually be there, experiencing the raw power of those landscapes, the challenges, the sheer determination. 
It must be awe-inspiring. Absolutely, and they don't just focus on the race itself. They use it as a springboard to talk about the bigger picture of conservation in Antarctica, which, let's be honest, isn't something most people think about every day. It's easy to forget about those remote corners of the planet, but they're all connected, right? What happens in Antarctica affects us all. 100%. And speaking of connections, they don't just stay in Antarctica, they travel all over. And one episode that really stood out to me was their exploration of the American bison. Oh, the bison. Now, there's an animal with an incredible story. Weren't they hunted to near extinction at one point? Yeah, in the late 1800s. It's a pretty dark chapter in human history. Can you imagine these majestic creatures that once roamed the Great Plains by the millions? reduced to just a few hundred. It's heartbreaking, really, a stark reminder of how much damage we humans can inflict on the natural world. But thankfully, the story doesn't end there. The episode delves into the bison's remarkable comeback and the critical role conservationists played in bringing them back from the brink. That's the thing about nature. It's resilient. And they don't just tell the story from a distance, they actually meet with Native American communities who have a deep-rooted spiritual and cultural connection to the bison. That's so important, recognizing the knowledge and traditions of indigenous communities who have lived in harmony with nature for centuries. It's a good reminder that conservation isn't just about science and data, it's about people, it's about culture, it's about understanding our place in the world and our responsibility to protect it. Couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> And while exploring the bison story, you know, Paul has this little dream of his he keeps mentioning. Oh, yeah. Okay. He wants to run alongside a bison stampede. Whoa, hold on. From a safe distance, I'm assuming. Of course, of course. But can you imagine the footage, the sheer power and majesty of these animals thundering across the plains? It would be incredible. And you can just tell Paul's passion for these animals is contagious. Totally. And it's not just the bison. He brings that same level of enthusiasm to every episode. Oh, and speaking of passion, we can't forget about the episode they filmed with Jamon Honsu. Jamon Honsu, the actor, what's he doing in a conservation series? Well, he's actually really passionate about running and social justice, so they teamed up for this incredible episode in Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia. What's in Richmond? They participate in Jamon's annual run Richmond 16.19 race, which commemorates the arrival of the first Africans to British-ruled Virginia in 1619. Wow, that's powerful. Using running as a way to acknowledge the past, celebrate resilience, and promote social change. Exactly. And they weave this historical thread seamlessly into the episode, highlighting the interconnectedness of everything. Social justice, cultural heritage, environmental conservation. It's pretty amazing how they bring it all together. Sounds like Natural Born Runners is more than just a show about running. It's about connecting with the world around us on multiple levels. Exactly. It's about finding your own pace, your own way to make a difference. It's inspiring, it's thought-provoking, and it's visually stunning. Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny. You watch a show like Natural Born Runners, and you're blown away by the scenery, the athleticism, the whole package. Right. It's visually stunning, no doubt about that. But then it stays with you. Like, you keep thinking about those deeper themes, those connections they make between running, conservation, social justice. It makes you think, what's my own connection to all of this? What's my own pace? It's inspiring. But it can also be a little daunting. Totally. Because you see Paul out there running across continents and you're like, OK, well, I can barely make it to the gym. Exactly. But that's the thing. It's not about comparing yourself or trying to replicate what they're doing. Right. It's about finding your own way to contribute, your own pace, just like you said. And that's what Natural Born Runners does so brilliantly. It reminds us that we all have a role to play, that we don't have to be superhuman athletes or globetrotting adventurers to make a difference. So if you're feeling even the slightest bit intrigued by Natural Born Runners, I highly recommend checking it out. It's the kind of series that leaves you feeling hopeful and empowered, ready to lace up your own shoes and find your own pace in the race to protect our planet. Beautifully said. And on that note, we'll leave you with this. What's your next step going to be?